So, what are you most keen on in, for Asia? Like Asia? Yeah, is this your first time here? First time, never yeah. been. Uh, so it's just like, I'm just keen to see new things. We went to, where were we yesterday? We were in Kuala Lumpur, we went to, I think it was uh, Batu Caves. Yeah. Never seen anything like that in my life. There's just all these like wild monkeys running around, stealing people's food. You get photos with them, like, and just all the temples and stuff are really mm. cool. It's just completely different to anywhere that we've ever been before, so. Whenever we go anywhere, we just like to try and get out and see as much as we can. So just like sightsee, see things that we wouldn't normally see at home. And, I mean, this this tour, it's pretty long, right? How, how long does it spend for? Too long, no. <laughs> <laughs> no um, we started it in Australia about nearly a month ago now. It doesn't feel like a month, though. Uh, but we don't go home until about April, I don't think, because we do... We've done Australia, we've done Japan, and then we're in Southeast Asia now. And then we fly from here, we have one day off, we get home to do washing and stuff, and then we start a UK <laughs> yeah. tour for five days, do that, finish that, do a month and a half in America, fly home, do mainline Europe, come back and then do more yeah, UK. Yeah. So it's really, really, really it's busy. Crazy. I mean, with long tours like that, usually, what, what does the band usually hope to achieve from tours like that? I don't know, it's just kind of like, just widen the fan base. It's just like, it, it, I, we all like touring, the, the main reason we do it is just because we love doing it, we don't like doing anything else, so the longer we can do it for the better really. But I don't know, like, it's just like playing the fan base, just play to fans, play new songs, just to kind of gauge how songs are going down, and it's just, it's just fun more than anything. Um, but I guess with touring, there's a lot of like feelings of like homesickness and like, you know, sometimes you just really want to yeah. get out and like, just, oh, I can't do this anymore. I mean, on the road, how do you guys sort of like, what are some of the rituals or things that you do to try to like, keep everything together? Uh, it's kind of weird, like, it's a lot easier nowadays than I imagine it used to be, like, we all have like phone plans that work in like most countries, so we can just FaceTime home to like parents, to like girlfriends, and just speak to them there and then, so it's, it's not too bad, we still keep in touch and everything, and obviously you miss home, but then when you sit back and you think like what you're doing, it's kind of hard to think of anything else, because like, what we do as a job, if you want to call it that, it's not a job. It's absolutely insane. It's just like, it's just so much fun that you kind of like get caught up in it and don't really think about home too much a lot of the time. Well, personally for me anyway, that's what happens. Yeah. It kind of sucks. My girlfriend's going to kill me for saying that. But, uh, yeah. It's all good. Yeah. I don't know, like, we don't really have rituals, just calling home, making sure everything's all right. And then when we do get home, if we end up missing it, guaranteed we'll be sat there for a week and we're like, well, I'm bored now. I don't want to be here. I want to yeah, get going again. Sure. So that always Great. happens. So I guess like, to put it simply, it's just really staying connected with the ones back yeah. at home. Yeah, right? just staying connected with the people that you're close to, just talking to them a lot. I'm terrible for it. Like, I'm really bad at just replying to anybody <laughs> in any form of message. Like, I'm really, really, really bad. So anyone will tell you that. Anyone in the band, anyone in our crew will be like, oh, no, he never replies to anybody. It's just, but yeah, I try. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, I mean, just to sidetrack a little, but I mean, many aspiring bands from all across the world, like, getting to tour is really like a dream come true. Mm -hmm. I mean, what kind of sort of like advice would you give to bands like this? Like, should they go for go for the kill? Or sort I, of like I'd say do it sensibly more than anything. Like, you can tour, but you've kind of got to make sure that like you're at the point where you're ready to. Mm -hmm. Like, you can do it, you can do it too early. Like, you can just go out and play a load of shows and like, it's good, you get some experience under your belt, but you're probably not really going to benefit from, from the get-go. Like. Yeah. I don't know, kind of like build like a name for yourself like as a band first before you start going on extensive tours. Like there's nothing wrong with going and playing like shows yeah. like here and then, but I feel like building like a presence for your band nowadays, like online especially, because it's the best media tool you could ever hope to use, like Facebook and Twitter, yeah. you can reach anybody in the world through it. So it's just kind of like build a, a solid fan base first and then start touring. Like we didn't tour for six months. Yeah. Like we just sat sat at home and then people kept asking and asking and asking and when we eventually did like the tours were really really good so I feel like we benefited from doing that at the start. So speaking of social media like building a fan base and all, is it safe to say that Neck Deep can, you know a lot of people kind of coin Neck Deep as like the Tumblr famous band? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. If we, Tumblr wasn't a thing we wouldn't be in <laughs> Southeast Asia now. That's true. So in, in your personal opinion how do you think like social media has sort of like helped bands like Neck Deep? Um, sort of like progress. I don't know, like, it's just that it just reaches an audience that you never think that it would. It's kind of like you just, we put one song on the internet and then it grew grossly out of proportion from there. Like it just went 
just skyrocketed. It was just one song online, and then from that, it's just yeah. stemmed to just touring everywhere and doing it all the time. It's like a job again. It's, it's <laughs> not, but it's just like I don't know. It's, it's really weird. Like without the internet, we wouldn't be doing anything. We'd just be sat at home still doing absolutely zero. Yeah. Work. So <laughs> I think we kind of got lucky. The right but people heard the right us at the right yeah. time, and then took us under their wing. And then from there, it's just been onwards and upwards since, really. Mm. Yeah. But speaking of Tumblr, do, do you use Tumblr? No. No, I used it like before we were in the band and then I used it for like a year and I just, I just don't understand it. It's just yeah, looking true. at pictures and then reposting the pictures. Yeah, like, I, I just don't get this. Yeah. As well. But speaking of, of that, do you, do you kind of think that there might be like downsides of social media in that sense? Definitely. People tend to take whatever they hear on the internet as truth and then it's just kind of yeah, like that's true. a lot of times not. Okay, so let's go on to like the, the latest record, Life's Not Out to Get You, right? Let's talk a bit about that. So what are like some of the influences that you guys have for writing this new record? I don't really know. We kind of just wanted to just make a neck deep record, but just mm. bigger and better. We went When we went in, we just said we wanted to make one of our albums, like we wanted to write a, a neck deep record, but we wanted to just sound way bigger than what we've ever done before. And yeah. I think we like really, really accomplished that. Like Andrew Wade and uh, Jez from uh, Day to Remember really, like really, really <laughs> helped like with some parts of it. But it's just like, I feel that for, for me, when we were sat writing it, I just felt like the choruses were catchier than they ever have been before. And just like everything just sounded like huge, which is what we really, really wanted to like do. Like you knew it was the one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> like when we were just writing some songs, it's like, yeah, this is sick. <laughs> nice. What, what about the challenges or any like tough spots? That the only difficult bit being was like, it was a bit of an odd time to record it because we had to do it over Christmas, so we had to be away from home yeah. and stuff like that. But other than that, like it was, we went in with a strong like base for the album. Like We had a lot of the songs done already and we just kind of went into the studio we were ready to go really we spent a lot of time just in pre-pro we spent like a month like pre-production just like making sure that every song was perfect and then we went into tracking and then, yeah i mean we didn't really like write too much whilst we were there because we had a good chunk of it before we even arrived yeah that's true i mean uh i play in a band as well and like when we do record we kind of make this big mistake of sort of like setting deadlines for ourselves yeah. what do you think about that like uh, we kind of had to because we had the time book for a certain amount of time but i think like preparation wise we did really well but uh, w with deadlines, it's always good to work towards something. But I wouldn't strictly stick to it because if you're forcing yourself, it's not gonna, it's, it's not gonna happen. You kind of just like need to let it, let it flow. And if some days you'll go in, and you can't do anything. So there's no point in sitting in the studio and just being like, oh, we need to get this done. It's like, well, you might as well just go home because you're not yeah. feeling it that day. There's no point in trying to force it out of you because chances are the song that you're gonna record is not gonna be the best thing that you can do. So with Neck Deep, it, it kind of there were there were instances that you guys went in and you were just trying. Um, some days it was just a bit slower than others, but honestly, like a lot of the stuff that we went into the studio with ended up on the album. There's like some songs that we recorded which didn't make it, but they're <laughs> going to be used in the future. So we've just got we've got ideas piled up, so we're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, on the lyrical side of things, maybe um, shed some light on it. Any any new themes or like stories that life's not out to get you sort of revolves around? I think the main aim for Ben. I can't really. I can not really speak what's in his mind but I think the main aim was to just make people listen to the album and not want to be sad he wanted people to feel happy when he listened to it so rather than like talking about oh this place is rubbish I'm from a fucking shithole it's like well, no <laughs> he didn't want to do that he wanted to say like he like maybe the place we're from is not great but we like it anyway and stuff like that so that's I can't kick up the yeah. roots what it's about like that's acknowledging right. the fact that our oh, hometown is a dive but we love it anyway because that's why it's amazing because it is rubbish and there's nothing going on there but that's why it's amazing <laughs> yeah. so little posy vibes man. yeah so literally just like rather than sitting down and listening to an album being like mm, just feeling a bit Ugh, after it we wanted people to listen to it and just like feel just a bit more inspired and just a bit happier that's true. speaking of posy vibes so what are some of the things that you do that you know kind of like keep yourself happy keep me happy yeah i'm a absolute full-on nerd so all I ever do when we're away is like play video games Sick. keep catching up on the wrestling I watch WWE I watch New Japan wrestling uh, what else do I do I buy a lot of toys that keeps me happy <laughs> nice. yeah just absolutely I'm one of the most boring people in the world no, that's literally no, all I do but yeah it's just yeah <laughs> just just keeping up to up to date with all my hobbies which is just basically anything that involves video games toys or wrestling <laughs> <laughs> it's sick all right so um goal steps man you guys did the video for that most recently yeah. right um how, how's the how's the process why that song actually uh we just like the song like the minute we like started it uh we, we like uh 
co-wrote that one with uh, Tom Denny uh, and he came up with the idea for the main riff and we heard it for the first time and we're like whoa that's <laughs> sick we've never had anything like that before and we're like that's instantly a single so we, we took that and then we um, yeah we just shot the video and I remember just getting we uh, pitched like out to said that we wanted to film a video at some point we pitched out and then um, Carl Thrash came back to us he did the video for your graduation from Modern Baseball and we saw that and loved that video and we were like oh that's sick it'd be cool to work with him and then he just came back with this mad idea of us just on the back of a skate ramp smashing it down the road <laughs> nice. and oh most dangerous afternoon of my entire life <laughs> it was like, worth it though oh yeah no health and safety at all though like no like ambulance there in case anyone <laughs> fell off and went under the wheel it was just like oh if it happens it happens but yeah. it was it was fun and the video came out really really sick no, yeah we've got to agree with it it's, it's I mean, my favorite video that we've done by far oh nice yeah so speaking of modern baseball you know like um the other bands and other counterparts in the pop punk community. Um, yeah. you, you guys did a split with Knuckle Punk two yeah. years ago. Mm -hmm. So it kind of seems like it's time for another split, right? Maybe. <laughs> who knows? Um, I'd love to do who, one. Yeah. I mean, in your personal opinion, who are you keen to work with next? Um, I don't really know. Uh, it'd probably just be a friends band. I'd go and pick the obvious choice and just say state champs because we <laughs> nice. just do everything with them. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like that'd be cool to just split with them. I'd like to do something weird where they cover us and we cover them. Maybe that'd be quite cool. Oh yeah, that's. Yeah. that's I'll pitch it to them. It's literally I've never even thought about it before. But I'll text Ryan later. Be like, we should do this, and they'll probably be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. I mean, yeah. so I mean, state champs are like from the other side of the globe, mm -hmm. man, right? And I mean, you guys did the Intercontinental tour, like last year with Trophy Eyes and Seaway and, and Knuckle Park as right. well. Mm -hmm. So like, how how does it feel like you know? playing with bands from like the other side of the globe and all of you just converge in one place and it's really weird like it's the weirdest thing is like every tour starts with like you'll start with people like oh hi not really speak to each other for the next few days but then by the end of it because we normally do like american tours with these bands so by the end of it you're out for four and a half weeks or something so you end up like living with each other it's like like family while you're out and about so we just get on with whoever we toured with really really well like we still keep in touch and stuff, like text each other all the time, just <laughs> chatting the absolutely Facebook, rubbish. Yeah, me and uh, Joe from Knuckle Puck always text talking about Gundam. <laughs> oh, like that's we, all, we both build like the models and stuff, so we're always texting back and forth. Like, oh, look what I just made. It's really, really sad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess it's times like this, you, you get to meet people that share the same interests yeah. apart from like, you know, just the music that you play. Yeah. It's really weird though, like, because a lot of these bands, like, as well as like playing in a similar style of music, we share like a lot of hobbies, which I never yeah. would have thought would have happened. Which is cool, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm just gonna say this, but I love Spires, man. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, <laughs> Spires, man. So, um, I know, um, uh, Phil, Phil played in Climates as well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so, um, I mean, having played in bands like Spires and Climates, yeah. how does it feel like playing, you know, like change into it's things? It's fun, like, I don't think, like. I don't know, like I've never really transitioned out of the phase of just standing on stage and <laughs> banging my head a load, which is, I don't know, it's always just been the way. I don't know, like it, 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 the transition felt fine. Like we played like hardcore for a while and then we just thought, oh, we'll write a pop punk song and then we wrote a pop punk song and then now we do this. <laughs> <laughs> so it worked out a bit better. It was just nice to finally, because we'd been in bands for years, all of us, like regardless yeah. of those two, like loads previously and we'd, we'd slogged away at it over and over again, touring relentlessly for absolutely nothing and then it kind of just felt like a bit of a lucky break for everybody really, yeah. which is cool. We like doing it, we used to all obviously grew up on bands like Green Day, Blink-182, yeah. so it just kind of felt right eventually. That's true. Shout out to Spires though. Yeah. <laughs> Reunion, never probably, but... <laughs> yeah, but um, so, speaking of pop punk, like, well Neck Deep is most well known for like the generic pop punk merch, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Tell, tell me more about that, man. Why do you? Well, <laughs> we used to get like, when we started out, people would be like, oh, yeah, we get like reviews in magazines and like live reviews and stuff like, yeah, they're doing all right, but they're not trying to like push the boundaries of it. It's like, well, no, it's not the point. We're not meant to be pushing the boundaries. We're a pop punk band. Like, it doesn't make any sense. We're not like a jazz fusion band. Like, yeah. we are a pop punk band. We're writing pop punk. So we just decided to take it and we're like, right. Fuck it, we'll just stick it on a t-shirt, and then we just everybody just wants that shirt all the time. Yeah, now. that's true. So, yeah. I, I mean, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of just the poking fun at ourselves, and then it ended up just being really, really, really successful. <laughs> okay, and like, so you're saying like critics and music like reviewers like they say like it's not pushing the boundaries, but I mean, 
in my opinion, I think Neck Deep really struck like a really deep chord with the pop bump yeah. community. And I mean, how do you guys feel about that? Like, it's awesome. Like, I mean, even like nowadays, this was like in the very early days where like magazines and stuff didn't really know us or get us. And then they, we've always been like supported by like the press always, like yeah. regardless of what magazine, AP, Kerrang, Rock Sound, anything like that. It's been, we've always been treated really well. But I don't know, like in terms of like, striking a chord with people, it's just, it just happened. It was never intentional. Like we just, wrote a song and then it just blew completely out of yeah. proportion like it's we funny. didn't expect any of this like it just came it happened so quickly as well like one day i'm in university working part-time at a video game shop and then next minute i'm not in university not working part-time and just doing this <laughs> it's just like it was i mean it's been a lot of hard work it's not just been like oh wow they've done so much in such a short space of time we have we've been lucky but at the same time it's been a lot of grafting like we basically not really been off tour for yeah. three years and I don't think we will be for the next five to ten to fifteen however long we keep doing it and however long people keep caring like the only thing I want to do is this so yeah. as long as people keep, yeah, yeah. people keep listening we'll keep doing it which, which brings me to the question like from the day you like Neck Deep was formed until today how, how much do you think the band has changed? not a lot really <laughs> still the same people like I, I've always like pride of myself and I think everybody else was on just being normal people like we're not like rock stars or anything stupid like that we're just five idiots that just got lucky and they're just still the same five idiots that they were three years ago so I don't know I think it's just trying to stay grounded a lot of people at home help you do that as well like yeah. if I'm like if we ever someone ever sees us on TV or something like I get a text up a friend like Ooh, look at this idiot <laughs> on telly it's like, oh, nice one <laughs> yeah. yeah but what about the showmanship and like just like um, you know, the quality of like what you guys are producing. I don't know, like, like I mean, showmanship wise on stage and stuff, like, I think people know who we are and what we're like. They all know what we're all into and yeah. stuff. But, like, playing live, it's just always been something that I think has just come naturally to everyone. We've always liked playing in a band. The best thing about being in a band is playing live. Like, the studio is cool and everything, so is writing music, but there's nothing better than taking that and playing it in front of people. And yeah. I just think, like, if you're not having fun on stage and moving around and jumping about, why should anybody out there be? Like, no one wants to pay money to go and see a band just stand there and play through the songs <laughs> yeah. and do one. They want to see them just have fun. And if you're having fun, the audience are having fun. Yeah, like all the mic grabs. These yeah, days. mic grabs, just me jumping around like an absolute idiot, hardly playing the guitar, but... <laughs> <laughs>